Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got a great video. This is a video a long time coming. A lot of people have been asking for it. This is uh, Fat Tony in the book. But he's actually uh, Tommy Bohm. He's one of my best friends. Uh, we did a lot together. He knows, you know, it's a figure of speech. He knows where the body's buried. Uh, so I came to Fort Lauderdale to do an interview with Tommy. Tommy's been there doing some great things we're going to talk about as well. Before I get started, check us out on YouTube member programs, Patreon, Discord. Check the merch out. Gangster Redemption's doing great. Check that out. And uh, just if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button, and, and you're going to get notified when we do videos just like this. Okay. Tommy. Fucking welcome to the show, buddy, man. About this time. is a long time coming. About time. You know, it, it's a long time coming because obviously we went to a lot together. I mean, uh, people always used to ask me, how did you do things? Well, and I would just used to say, well, Tommy did that. Tommy took care of that. Uh, you know, from when we were in the limo, we had the drivers, and, and, and you know, Missy did not remember Big Mike and Steve. Yep, from, from grandstands. Yeah, uh, wow, you got the memory, man. I forgot where. We're talking about, guys, we're talking about one bodyguard of mine. One was 6'8", about, he looked like Big John Studd. Absolutely. Uh, you remember him in the front of the limousine, the way they looked? Big bitch. And the other guy was 6'4", about 260, 270. Cut. I mean, like, he looked like Fabio. Yep. Uh, so we had a bunch of stuff going like that. And those guys were like, put it this way, when I went into a bar, the owners would ask me if they could use those guys. You remember that? Yep, absolutely. That's how Steve was, uh, you know, he was an electrician by his trade, but he was working for you and working at grandstands to do bouncing over there. All right. And, and when I say bouncing, they'll bounce your fucking ball. Right? I mean, these guys were monsters. I remember, Tommy, if you remember this, going into Roxy's and Marino's people were there, but my people were bigger. Uh, yeah, you know? <laughs> absolutely. He was always there. And the funny thing about it, everybody always thought Marino was the nicest guy in the world, and then all of a sudden it came out that he did have a kid out of wedlock. Yeah, well, we used to see him at Roxy's uh, all the time. We used time. to see him all the time. We got to know him. Uh, he wanted me to come into the thing, and I wouldn't, I because of you guys. I said, nah, you know, I got my own guys. That's when I was throwing money off the balcony, remember? We were, we were making it rain. Uh, but let, I want to ask you, listen, Tommy, you were with me, and let me explain what you did. Tommy literally was my right-hand man uh, when I needed cars rented or I needed things done. Or well, organizing the bookmaking and everything else. Tommy, when we got the clubhouse together, yep. and we built, literally, we built the clubhouse in a warehouse with a stolen air condition on a roof and had people build it out. Uh, uh, Jerry built it out, yep. if I remember. Yep, Jerry did. And we built three, we had, we had three bays and the big one with the limo, but we were putting a bar in there when the feds started getting on us. Uh, Direct TV back in the old days to watch all the games. Oh and, yeah, we had yeah. You're talking about with the cards. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you, well, now you, you know we're talking. Tommy and I know each other from the late '80s. Uh, yeah, '88, '87, '91, well, February 1991. That's when I got separated from my first wife. And I moved and you next moved next door. to me. I moved next door. Tommy lived next to me, and I used to throw the parties. Uh, the epic parties that are known to this day by people all over. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, Still talk about it. Anytime we've been to funerals, this, that, whatever, it's always, it always comes up. Every I remember you at the party. Yeah. And Tommy, I had it set up at the party, everybody, that how it worked was if you knew somebody there, you were good. So Tommy would say to the guys who was working with him, the bouncers, if, ask them who they know. If they don't know any, get rid of them. Because this party was massive. We had the city shut, literally city give us Porta Johns, shut the street down. What permits? There was no permits. Well, we knew the mayor, that helped. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Rest <soul>. Very well. <laughs> uh, and we had we had a lot of good times. But Tommy, do you remember the night I got arrested? Yeah. Um, tell, tell the audience from your, because I never actually heard it right. totally from your perspective. I know what happened to me, but. Uh, scary, of course, scary as shit. Uh, so. I got a phone call from Missy that uh, the feds were, had just came, and within minutes they knocked on my door. And uh, so. Oh, they, you mean you knew they were coming? No, not no. After Missy, oh no, I didn't know they were coming to me. They, but I knew, I knew they had got got to you, and then all of a sudden knocking on my door, and uh, they asked me if I'd mind going for a ride. But I didn't have to go with them. I just had a drive down myself to drive down the FBI headquarters. Well, they didn't ask me that. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> they, they put me in handcuffs and uh, escorted me. Let's just put it that way. Uh, you know, that was so big at the time. They shut the streets down. No neighbors. You remember that? So they asked you to come down? They asked me if I'd mind coming down 
and then they wanted to show me pictures and things like that. But what was going through? Let's. Uh, I don't want to get ahead of, ahead of everybody. What was going through your mind? Well, as the PTO dad, everybody knew me as. It was very scary. That's Tommy had a very good story and a good backstory. As did his dad, who was very close to me. Actually, held some guns and stuff. That was great, man. Yeah. Go, go ahead. But yeah, so uh, yeah, it was very scary because I was kind of like the goody two shoes guy, especially when I moved in next door to you. You know, at that time. I corrupted him. Until you <laughs> kind of corrupted me, but it was fun. <laughs> um, yeah, it was definitely, you know, when you go from being a. 29 year old married guy to a 29 year old single guy things was di things were different so it was a lot of fun you know but i was raising my girls as you know so great father but uh, thank you but uh yeah so it was definitely very scary when the fbi comes knocking yeah, on uh, uh, okay did you follow them down or did you go in the car with them no my own car they asked me if i would mind following them down did I, you I did you have to do anything. did you make any phone calls on the way down no did you I, even I, have I, a cell I, phone I, we didn't I, have cell phones yeah we we had some i don't know that i I don't know that. Remember, we had the big ones. Remember, Do you remember when I first saw it? I, I used to. Have, I had one of the first ones that had a strap around me, <laughs> yeah. and I would tell nobody. Tommy used to know I loved the movies. I would say, Tommy, I'm off. I'm offline, and he knew what I was doing. I was going to a movie. Don't bother me. And he took care of everything. So, but he, you, were the only one who knew where I was. Yeah, I still. I remember like when we had those phones. Sometimes the phone bills back then. Oh, thousands of dollars. Oh, it yeah, was so thousands. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. How much the phone bills were, oh you my know? God, and now right. you get unlimited everything for fifty bucks. I mean, right. back then it was thousands of oh, dollars. It was thousands. thousands. Absolutely. They shut up the bill because we hadn't paid them yet, and we owed four thousand dollars for our cell exactly. phone bills. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but so on the way down, what was going through your mind? Uh, I, I was so scared. I mean, scared. did you think you were going to get arrested? Yes, absolutely. I had no. I I I, w I had never been in anything like that, but because. I had been around, you never know who's been watching, this, that, you know, what I did, was it enough that they would want me or not want me, yes, I was very scared, very So, scared. oh, you go down, and we, and I do remember, we, I, they took me to a place in, in, in Opalaka, it's the, at the FBI, matter of fact, they had the new machines for hand, for fingerprinting machines, of course, I, I was probably probably one of the first that used them. So they put my hands in the things, and now I know the drill. You remember I had to, from back in Jersey, and I, the things that the drill for me was okay. Right. I knew I didn't know how big they had me at that point, but you, I saw you in Opalaka. Yes. Walking in the place. Yes. Did talk to you. Nope. Looked at we you, were, yeah, we and just sure. like kind of eyes met, and that was the end of it. You knew I wouldn't tell, didn't you? No, I, well, I mean, I knew you wouldn't tell, but that doesn't matter. You, didn't you don't know what they know. <laughs> you know like good. they say, the FBI doesn't ask you anything they don't already know the answers to. So, Pretty much true. So, you know, so yeah, so you have to be as honest as you possibly can be with them so that you don't get in any more trouble. So what questions did they ask you? The biggest thing they wanted to know if I knew who was in some pictures. <laughs> and thank God it's not like cameras today, so it was very easy for me to say, no, I didn't recognize who it was, you know, as we all know who it was at this point now. So, <laughs> it, was, it was Davey, so, but I, I, you know, I would never have said anything. So, no, I knew that. And because the cameras aren't of today's quality, that it was easy for me to say, no, I have no clue who that is. Was the quality not that good? Yeah, it was terrible. It was blurry, but of course, uh -huh. knowing your brother for as long as I've known your brother, of course... I would have known who it was. Of course. Now, uh, you know, there was a, uh, after the fact, there was a person that ended up ratting that was in jail, didn't even know me, you know, that knew of me. And he was one of Missy's friends and, and Tanya. Do you know that whole no, story? I, know, no, I, I, I will talk about that. We had no rats on my case, obviously. We had great FBI that fucking, and the, Matt, the guy that got me, Tommy, Matt Mullen, he, you know, he'd come and he, you know, he's showing me pictures, but they're not of David, they're of my bosses, and you knew it. Oh, yeah, I've met some of them. You, yeah, and I'm talking big people, very big people. And the, the first picture was, do you know him? It was Dominic, my boy. Right. My bigger boss, the Willie and then right. the Dominic. I knew Willie from right. when we went to New York. When we went to Jersey, we went to New York. Met when, when you hung out with Donald Trump and, yeah, you and Roger that? King. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, the whole work. So we're sitting there, and he shows me a picture, and I go, I don't know him. Now, that's eight by 10 glossies. These were good pictures. Next picture is me and Dominic at the parking meter in front of the home stretch. 
I go, oh, I just go there. I live near there. It's Brooklyn, and you know. It's family. Then the next picture is me and Dominic's Jaguar. And I said, well, he probably just dropped me off up at the train. He started looking at me laughing. I go, listen, it's not me. It's just not me. And uh, he, after we're done, he goes, you sure? I said, and I'm facing life at that point. And I said, it's just not me. And he goes, you know, I got a lot of respect for you. He did. And he says, uh, you're one of a dying breed. He goes, but I'll take it for what it is. He didn't hate me for it. He, he respected me. And uh, he didn't try to pound me. As we all do. Obviously. But he, he took, again, the gun charge is what I beat. You remember at, at that? With, the, with to the, your, the BB gun. With the BB gun. And thanks to your father, yep, too, yep, who absolutely. held my guns and gave it to me when I got out. I don't have a gun. <laughs> yeah. I'm being honest. There's zero guns. I, got, I don't own a gun. And when my dad died, I, get, I sold all his guns. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Good. Maybe there were a few. No, that, that's it. no, your dad was the aces. You know that. Yes. <laughs> Great story there. And they're both going. <laughs> but uh, so when you saw me in Opalaka, did you know I was done? Yeah, I, I assumed that you were definitely going to be in a lot of trouble. I mean, how much, I don't know, because I didn't know what they had, what they knew, how long they've been, you know, yeah. trying to get you. Six so, years. Right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so, but definitely we're very scared. So when they, they question you and you say you don't know it, right. did they ask more, any, was it a pretty short meeting? It was pretty short. I mean, you know, they didn't get anything that they wanted from me, and at that point, they told me to leave, and that was it. I Did mean, they say any, any cliches? They don't leave town, and nothing. Nothing. No. Did I, they give you a card? I saying mean, you gotta remember, I was three hundred and sixty-four pounds. I, I so, remember, I, so they we knew. used to again in the book. It was at Tony. It was Tommy, of course. Tommy doing great, man. Keep Thank it up. You. Yeah, keep it up. But yeah, I'm I was three hundred sixty-four pounds. So any pictures they saw of any of the stores, I was never in any of the pictures because I was never in any of the stores. So that part of it there was never going to be a, a question right because yeah, yeah, i yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah. in any well you know, you know i never wanted you in and you know right. that i wanted you to run sir it's funny because when it how they ended up getting me is when of course you rented the car correct you used to rent cars from me all the time and even when they're not bad stuff correct you used to rent cars stuff. All you the, just to go over to naples or go whatever we yeah to go to, to case the place yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hundred miles an hour across the oh alley oh my god more than <laughs> but, uh, but the uh, i uh when they got me when they got the plate and you were the driver, and they go, but he's not him. I happen to be the co-driver on the car. Right. And for insurance reasons. We for had insurance reasons. Insurance. And then they looked that up, and boom, the red flags went off. Organized crime, arrested for the drug. Yeah, you know, everything comes up. Bing, bing, like you hit the jackpot. Yeah, they just knew they hit the jackpot. But, it, which is okay. Listen, I looked at it after. I just didn't know how big they had it. I mean, the FBI is the best in the world. Don't let anybody kid you. Uh, when they want you... They got the resources and the manpower to do pretty much what they want, and I understand that. So, you leave FBI, I think they were the headquarters for South Florida at that yep. time. So you leave Opalaka, you're heading home. What did you do next? Um, I think, I mean, I know I was driving back up. I think once I got home, I think I called Missy, you know, see, you know how she was. So you got Ash home, Ashley. Wait, wait, well, you got home. You're the godfather yeah. of my daughter. Yes, absolutely. Know it. So you you uh, get home. Yep. We still fucking shaking oh, a little yeah, bit. Of course. I mean, I, I I did not sleep in my bed. I slept on the couch probably for the next three months. What thinking you were gonna get arrested? Just scared, nervous, everything. Yeah. For the next three months, I did not sleep in my own I bed. I slept like a baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did not. I slept on the couch downstairs. Because, really? Because, you know, when you're a big guy and you're laying on a couch, you know you can't turn because if you turn, you're going to fall on the floor. So I knew if I slept on the couch, I had a, I would be able to, without moving, you have to sleep that way. So I was able to sleep. If I went up to my bed upstairs, I'd be tossing and turning all night and I, my brain was going, everything was going, what's going to happen, what's going to happen to my children, what's going to... You know, I mean, anything, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. It, it's a traumatic experience. I mean, especially... We're not dealing with local cops, because you, you know they were jokes to us, and I don't mean that. To, they just were. They didn't have the resources. They didn't have the manpower. We had the ins. We knew everybody. I was gonna say, we, you knew some of the sheriffs, ex sheriffs, stuff like that at that uh, time too. We knew everybody. I mean, we, there wasn't a thing that could get by us at that point locally. FBI, 
little bit. Big different picture. But so you get home, you don't sleep. You call Missy. Yeah. My, Missy's my ex-wife. So you call this. Now she's a twenty. Four years old, maybe I think she was 24 at the time. Yeah. She had a little 18, uh, a 15 month old baby at the time. I had my my daughter. She must have been a mess. She was freaking out, absolutely. And again, I couldn't answer anything for her either because no. I didn't know anything. You right. Know? No. I, I told her I saw you, and I mean. Look, oh, you, you told her I saw her. Yeah, at, and, you, at yeah headquarters. and you look good down there. Everything, you know, whatever. But I didn't know anything. I didn't know what was going on. You know, I didn't. I didn't know anything, and I didn't. I didn't. I really. Now didn't. I do know this. After I got arrested, they came in, they took the, the memorabilia, which I had a zillion things of memorabilia, they started taking things out of the place. Do you know they never touched the safe either? Wow. And you're the only one who had the, I, I, I remember at one time, you had the only safe, because I used to go and I had to have, send Tommy to my house to get, go get money. They never touched the safe. They had, in the warrant, they had jewelry, jewelry, excess uh, jewelry equipment, or excess of cash or weapons. Uh, they didn't find it. In fact, the FBI was so good, they ended up, I had about three grand in my pocket. Gave the money, gave my Rolex, took my sneakers off, put shitty ones on. I know they put your drill in jail. And they, were, they, they weren't they assholes, you know, they, they respected. They treated me with respect, I gotta say this, and, I, and people know how I talk about law enforcement. Good law enforcement, they're not out to, to, to put more on. They know they got you. Trust me, the FBI, that's why when someone says, oh, you know, I was just uh, raided by the DEA, but you know, I beat it, uh, or they made a mistake. No, they didn't. You're ratty. <laughs> when the FBI came into my house with surround, well, you know, they surrounded the helicopter. The helicopters, the whole works. The whole I, I still hear about it from some of the younger kids that are now grown ups that remember it, that. And they, oh, that neighborhood was thrown upside down. And it was like uh, just a wild place. I mean, you know, they shut things down, I mean, of course. And they were through every through the patio, the ninja suits. And it wasn't just, it was FBI, uh, marshals. All feds. Did you know they never even used one local person? Wow. Not a sheriff. Not a. Uh, 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 where, where did we live? North Florida Police Department. None of those. They, 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 they didn't want. Again, they must have knew I had the ins. They ain't letting they anybody mean, fucking. They and, you want know, somebody to blow it by saying something or whatever. And Missy was followed that day. I didn't wow. know if you knew that. Oh, no, I didn't. She ended up going out and she said, you know, I think I was followed. And I'm thinking, uh, you know, I'm thinking bad people, mobsters, different people. But I was kind of on edge, if you remember, because I took my guns that were in my house at that point and got rid of them. Pop. And I just watched these. I didn't want anything in the house, if you remember that. And that was, that was good. Good to, move. But how about the best move of my life? Right. Uh, Otherwise, we wouldn't be sitting here right now. No. I was getting 100 years. What, what happened was... I was on edge, and it, but it was later in the day, and you know, we used to have cook lobsters every night, and, and, and remember the guy we had stealing lobsters out of the restaurant? So he, we, what a fucking place. We had the best place. If you want to talk about having it all, lobsters, bookmaking, we, you know, that was a Monday, and everybody was up getting their bookmaking equipment from South Florida, from everywhere. I mean, from North Florida. They had to keep thinking where I'm at. And, you know, David was there when they arrested me. Wow, I didn't even know that either. He I, was I there, wow. and he put him against the wall. Wow. And they didn't pick him, because they didn't know who. That's why they right. asked him, do you right. know? Oh, right, absolutely. And there was other kids, and you should have seen the kids that Davey had working for him up there, yeah, Pete, up in Brevard, and those kids were like, oh shit. You know, like, this is real, wow. you know? But uh, you get home, you talk to Missy. I do know, I don't know who was, it was Junior and the gang, they took every everything out of the house that they, they could. Do you remember that? Right, yeah, well, I don't remember what they took. I remember they, whoever took it out, I didn't know who took it out because then I was able to sell some of that stuff right, to, my, to my old boss, to a few friends, so that, you know. Right, oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, now you got to start thinking about money. Right, absolutely. Uh, and uh, you had the uh, Dream Team ball, basketball. Dream, by the, by the original Dream Team sign. Molten basketball. 29 Yankee ball sign. Yep, 29 Babe, Babe, Yankee. Babe Ruth and everything. Lou Gehrig, Lou Gehrig. Bill Dickey. Yeah. I mean, you know, I had so much memorabilia. I was a memorabilia collector. Yep. Uh, was, and, was, and I had it on my wall. It was awesome, yeah. I was a party player. That Remember when I made the gym into the, well, it became a fucking room. Yeah, yeah. With all the mirrors. With mirrors all over the place, padded floor, the whole works. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, there was a workout place and it became a fucking pad. Uh, well, especially but, before you got married, but yeah. But <laughs> even, even after, come on, when, when did that stop me, yeah. if anything? Uh, it's just the way who I was. 
I, I, I want to get back to the people, what goes through somebody's mind uh, more. As time went, and you kind of knew you weren't getting arrested, at what point did you feel comfortable? Well, I would say um, it was at least three or four months. I mean, because it took a while. I mean, I know you had to wind up on going. I mean, you were in Coleman, and you were in Philly, and you were, but you know, and they bring you back oh, no, and they, forth to they, Philly oh, and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. So they gave me diesel therapy. Right. Right. Yeah. So once, uh, I mean, I'd get letters from you and stuff like that, and you know, and I knew that you were not taking a deal. So that that's the that's the number one thing that. Okay. Oh, I was really the only one who could hurt you. Right. In any major way. Right, because the other guys didn't even really even know they didn't me. Know. Okay. You know, right. people, people, I was, one of the, I think the things I did, and I think I learned this from the guys up north, everything was a need to know basis. Correct. I mean, nobody, not Davey, not Jimmy, not anybody, actually dealt with my people in New York. They might know who they were, never dealt with them, never gave them money, never gave them something, never received, I did. So there's only one person who was central in this whole thing, obviously me, and, and you, like you said, you knew, it was just not in me. I mean, you know, I, 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 you ask why, you could keep everything, you keep money, you remember me, I keep everything, and I, I just didn't, you know, it wasn't me. Yeah. I had a few of their numbers in my phone, which Who's? I think some of them are still in there. Who's? I think uh, Dominic, I think. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. You'd have me keep a few numbers that I had in a case of an emergency. Well, they're all dead, but right. <laughs> yeah. you're but, right. No, you know, no, I, in case of so, an emergency, right, who to call. emergency, yep, and. Uh, like, we got to kill. <laughs> like, yeah, like we were, I, I remember we went up to the jewelry store one time, you know, when you actually bought me this, and I still have it. This is not stolen. This Get it, bought. Purchased. Purchased, boy, <laughs> was not stolen. Still have it over this 20 day. years later. You know, we got to stop this one, Tommy. Uh, I want to have you on next uh, uh, to do part two on this because there's more to talk about. Awesome. Uh, some of the stories about the party in and this and stuff, I think we're going to have a lot of fun with. But again, Tommy, I want to thank you uh, for coming down. I'm going to come down again next week with the RV. And people want to hear more from you uh, because, again, you were there in the heart of it all. Some of the party and is legendary around here. From my limo exceeds with the cocaine and the girls and the fucking people and the hookers. I was fucking four good women in one day. Oh, uh, four different women a day for what, six months? Maybe more. Maybe more. I mean, I, I still remember when you were married the first time. Take care of the wife at home. You'd get to the office when you, was, when you had the security company. Be getting action there. Janie on the way home. And no, then, uh, and uh, then, uh, it was and uh, then Teresa, Teresa who was the hooker. Right, uh, and then, right, uh, and, yeah, and and then Jane was my uh, neighbor. And then, right, uh, and then and then after that would be a oh, grand, what, grandstands or whoever. Whoever, where we were going. Time. Even if they were paraplegic. Uh, <laughs> on that note, we are going to close this show. Listen, everybody, we got Tommy. I want to thank him again. Make sure you guys uh, uh, subscribe. Check out this next one. It's going to be the wild time. Uh, thanks again, Tommy. Appreciate you. know what? I love this. Love I miss you, Getty. Love you. Listen, make good choices. Do not make bad choices. Don't go to prison, guys. It, it, it wasn't worth it. I lost everything. You guys know it. Tommy knows it. And I like to try to help people now. So I want you guys to always think like that. Make good choices, but have fun. See you next time.